welcome to do it it is the season for blockbuster movies and we've got justice league coming out and we thought to get ready for it we would make some justice league coasters that are now available on thingiverse for you to download so let's get into the process of making these what i'm going to start off doing is i'm going to get into inkscape and Inkscape is something that I really love um, because it's a free program and it is hard to get any better than free. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a new document and we're going to change the document settings by going down to document properties and we are going to take off that page border and make sure that we're on millimeters and we should be good. Um, we can exit out of this then we're gonna set up our page so um, we are going to add in our layers and we're gonna add in our alignment and then we're also going to add in our stroke and really we're gonna be messing around with the layers the most so let's click and drag that all the way up to the top all right and for this, we're going to need a little background template and we are going to use um, the Justice League logos that I just found online. We're going to put that right on our first layer. So now that we've got the Justice League logo on our first layer, what we are going to do is we are going to lock this layer and add a new layer so it doesn't really matter what the layers name is we just have to add in a new layer um, and we're gonna bring the opacity of the first layer down to about half Then we're gonna zoom in one to one so we've got a really good look at the Justice League logo so what we're really gonna be using most is the Bezier tool so what you're going to do is um, get your Bezier pen, which is um, down here in the corner, or you can just hit B on the keyboard. And what I'm going to do is fumble around here because I'm not on the right layer. So once I get on the right layer, I'm going to drag down some guidelines, and this will help my Bezier pen snap to those points. Um, very easily to make sure that um, everything stays lined up. Um, if you are interested in learning more about Inkscape, um, like I am, um, I would suggest Nick Saperito's videos on YouTube. Um, the guy is a wizard, and sometimes I watch him just for recreation because he's that good. Uh, so if you're interested in logo making or um, anything that would have to do with Inkscape or Photoshop or GIMP, um, he is definitely the guy to see. Now, when you get a couple of these guides closer together, they end up snapping to each other. And what you can do is just turn off that snap to button in the upper left hand side and um, then move another guide down. So now that we've got all of our guides kind of closer in place, you kind of want to get rid of some of the older guides. And you can tell this is um, not something that I do religiously, so there are some times where I'll fumble along. But basically, once we're all done with setting up guides, it's just tracing with the Bezier pen, and we can um, fast forward to the end here. So now that you got the tracing all done, what I like to do is to draw a box around everything so I can select it and then go up to the top here and group it all together. Now um, this is something that I do just so I can copy and paste and keep it all in proportion 
And before I um, export it, I really want to put it on a fresh new page. So we'll just get rid of coaster lines that I had here. And then we'll put our Justice League symbol there. And we will um, save it to our computer as Justice League Coasters. And we'll jump right ahead to our Tinkercad. So now we're going to go into one of my favorite 3D modeling websites, which is Tinkercad. And we're going to upload our file here, um, Justice League. And when we import it, we're going to want to just click on the art. And you can see that it just highlights the art area. And import. And just like that, we've imported our shape into Tinkercad and it's made it into a 3D object for us, which is awesome. So this really works for any SVG, and then you can manipulate it into Tinkercad, and um, the results that I've had are pretty awesome. And to think that it's just essentially tracing around anything that you like, um, you can um, do whatever your heart desires with this. So now let's go into some of the coasters that I've already made. I've already pre-traced a lot of these. And all you have to do is put them inside a coaster design, group it together, and hit that group button up top. And you can export that one piece and you've got one file right there. So that's what I essentially did for all of these different files. Now, if you want to make sure that they get all centered perfectly, if you're very um, particular about those things, I would hit the Align button after you select both, and then click on both of those centering buttons, and it works out great as well. So now, let's fast forward to our 3D printing. So we printed this off for a hero in our community. Mr. Andrew Wolf dropped everything this year when Hurricane Harvey hit Houston. He collected a bunch of supplies and then drove the 14 plus hours down to make sure he was there to do everything he could for the people in need. Mr. Wolf is a big superhero fanatic and we thought this would be a perfect small little token that we could give as a thank you for all the work that he's done this year. So head to our Thingiverse page and print off a set of these for yourself anytime that you want. Find a hero in your life, kick back, and hopefully watch the new Justice League movie with them. So I printed a couple of these different models and these first ones did not turn out so great. You can see that there are some definite inconsistencies there and some bubbling and that's because I only did 5% infill and it just didn't work out well. I mean you can still tell what it is but it's not the quality that you're looking for and you can see even in this Aquaman one there are some pretty big holes that you're dealing with. Now on 20% infill the results ended up way better. I mean, very smooth, very crisp logos. Um, still need some cleaning up a little bit, but overall I was extremely pleased with this. And a number of things have been brought up since I've printed these, and um, the first of which is with the raised lettering, how do glasses sit on this? And that's a good question. Um, it is a little difficult for some glasses and bottles to sit on these. However, um, these are designed perfectly for coffee cups to sit right on the rim. So you should have no problem with coffee cups. However, if you need to put something else, you can just flip it upside down and it's a totally flat surface on the bottom.
If you've enjoyed this project video and are interested in other similar videos that involve 3D printing, laser cutting, CNCing, we encourage you to hit that like and subscribe button. We will send out alerts on Twitter and Instagram anytime that we're working on a video and we should have videos posted regularly. Thanks for taking the time to join us and we hope to catch you next time on Do It.